Hey, it's Tyler from Actibeat, and today we're settling an age-old squabble between butter and margarine. When it comes to settling it once and for all, we want to know which one of these spreads on your bread is healthier. Round 1. Comparing Ingredients The slippery debate between butter and margarine begins right under the lid. For years, butter got the thumbs down from health professionals because of its high saturated fat. That's the bad kind. As a basic rule, foods derived from animal fat sources always contain more saturated fat, which increases LDL, or bad cholesterol. Like it or not, butter lovers are primarily eating animal fat in the form of cow's milk fat. To make butter, the dairy, usually cow's milk or cow's cream, is shaken or churned vigorously until it reaches a semi-solid state. To this day, experts at the Mayo Clinic still consider margarine the healthier choice, because it's made with vegetable oils. That means margarine is made with mostly unsaturated, or good fats, such as monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, which work to reduce low-density lipoprotein, LDL, or bad cholesterol. You're going to hear a lot about those. However, even though physicians consider vegetable-based margarine a heart-healthier choice, not all margarines are alike, especially when many contain partially hydrogenated plant-based oils, which, well, it produces trans fatty acids. So yes, margarine contains its fair share of trans and saturated fats as well, unless you specifically purchase varieties with no trans and no saturated fats. Be sure to examine those ingredients closely to be sure. And one quick tip, the more solid the margarine or butter, the more trans fat they typically contain. All right, it sounds like margarine comes out on top for this round. <laughs> round number two, the nutritional goods. Numbers don't lie. And in the case of nutritional data, traditional butter in stick form serves up roughly 100 calories per tablespoon. When it comes to the heart-clogging attributes of butter, consider the 30 milligrams of dietary cholesterol. That's 10% of your daily recommended dose and the 11 grams of fat seven grams of which are quote unquote bad or saturated fat per serving. Now whipped butter typically contains less fat and calories due to its lighter airy consistency. However, if you stand by using solid butter, you can still shave off half the fat and calories if you opt for a light or low fat variety infused with water or gelatin, which helps maintain the solid consistency. You can also seek out a butter blend made with canola oil or olive oil, which lowers the overall bad cholesterol and saturated fat content and still tastes pretty good in baked goods. Now margarine might be lower in fat, at roughly 2 grams each in trans and saturated fats per tablespoon, but registered dietitians and nutritionists warn that many people just make the mistake of slathering on twice as much to make up for lack of flavor. So with margarine, the general rule is that the softer the spread, the healthier it is for your heart. And, like butter, light or low-fat margarines shave off a decent amount of fat and calories due to added water and fillers. So, butter and margarine both have alternatives. Let's call it a tie to keep things simple for this round. Round 3. According to the experts. When it comes to heart health, research from the American Heart Association recommends skipping both butter and margarine in favor of another soft, trans-fat-free spread. Basically, if the ingredients note partially hydrogenated oils, there's trans fats in the tub, even if the label promises trans fat free. Always check the label and opt for a spread with no trans fats and as little saturated fat as possible. Remember, it's the fat that adds up quickly if you smear on a little too much or have seconds. So, for a delicious bread topper, try switching your attention to healthy fat alternatives. Try a drizzle of olive oil mixed with balsamic vinegar, or maybe go for a thin layer of mashed avocado as a sandwich spread. For cooking, you could reach for a bottle of monounsaturated fatty oils, like plant-based oils, you know, for sautéing and frying foods. And if you insist on butter or margarine, just be sure to keep your portion small. It's all about moderation. Now, this doesn't mean you need to cut margarine or butter out of your life entirely. It's just something you might want to consider as you go forward. So what do you think? So who comes out on top? I kind of gave a cop-out answer by saying not to use either, but there are some facts that might be pointing towards margarine as a bit healthier. But it's an age-old debate, so let's hear what you think. Add your voice in the comments and let us know. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.